Good afternoon, everybody. This is Malik, and sorry I haven't been on in a in a while. Lots been lots been going on at work and stuff. But uh, had a had a couple of people ask me if I could get into the forensics missions. Um, so I'd beat these once before on my Linux box, uh, but uh, redid or at least redid the first one on my Windows box uh, to just to show you how to do it um, of course you go about it the same way the tools you use of course will be will be very different there's some tools on Kali that I use it's not available for Windows but in this case I'm on my Windows box and we're going to take this this first one here the, the first time go so this is the, the very first forensic mission difficulty is easy so here we go so, uh, let me do something here to make life a little bit easier for you. Alright. So, Stacy has written us and said, Thanks for agreeing to help me. We recently had a problem with a former employee, and, I, and though I cannot prove it, I believe he is the one that erased the files off my thumb drive. I did some research. I made an image of the drive for you, but that's as far as I got. I can replace most of what was lost, but there is one file in particular that holds a very important account password. If you recover that file, I would be extremely grateful. Also, this is my personal thumb drive. Keep that in mind. I'm not sure what you may recover, but I would rather it not get spread around. There's an attachment and an MD5 checksum. So, the attachment. Take the attachment. It is a tar.gz archive uh, so of course you just go ahead and save that thing you can open it with, with multiple things um, so you save that and that's you know, I just saved it to my desktop all right so where do we go from here the first thing is we're gonna need to of course decompress that file to see what's inside of it uh, you can use whatever decompression agent you want to use. I've got quite a few on my machine and some of them work great for some files. Some of them don't work great for other ones. Um, uh, in fact, I forgot the one I even used for this one. Oh, Express Zip, uh, which is just a, a default decompression utility that comes with Windows. But whatever you run it through, this is the file you're going to end up with. It's going to be the image file. It's a .dd file. So, your first job and the first thing you need to research is what can you do? First off, what is a .dd file? And what can you do to open it up? So, that's the first thing you need to take a look at. And until you know that, you really don't know where to go from there. Um, again, whether you're running Linux or whether you're running Windows, it's going to be a, a completely different thing. Um, this is not an extremely complex mission, uh, but it is going to require, in Windows, two pieces of software. So the first piece of software you need is something that will allow you to open up that DD file. So do some research. Find out what program opens up that DD file. You're going to have to download it, install it, run it, um, and see if you can get to it. And uh, so I'll pause here for a second, let you do that. I'll show you the one I used, um, and then the results that you get back when you get that. All right, so I'll give you a second here to do that one, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so if you took a look at a DD file, um, so if you know if, if, if you just Googled, um, you, know, you know, what is a DD file? Well, what's a DD file? How to open it? What is a DD file? How to open it? Blah 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 blah. 
is a compressed file created by Microsoft Disk Doubler Archive. Developer is semantic. It's a compressed file uh, created by Macintosh Disk Doubler for Mac OS Classic, etc., etc. So basically, you already know that it is, it, it's really just a compressed file. This is the copy of the drive that she made. Because she told us that she made a copy of the drive. So now we just need something to open it. Well, I used a program called OSF Mount. Again, there's tons of programs that can do it. But I used uh, OSF Mount. So let me actually, there's my file. Let me go ahead and extract it. And get out of the way. And I'm going to extract to my desktop. And there it is. Okay. And where'd you put it? There it is. It's over on my other screen. So there's the file. So <clears throat> now to open that thing. Now again, I used OSF mount. Uh, there's multiple programs you can use to do it, but OSF mount is simple. It just allows you to mount virtual disks, um, compressed disks. Um, I mean, I've done it with tons of other ISO programs too, but this one works. So in this case, I'm just going to mount. And I have to point to the image file. So that's going to be on my desktop. And it's just called image.dd. You can give it a drive letter. It's going to pick up a drive letter, so drive E is fine. Now, I don't want it read-only. So I'm just going to turn that off. And it's basically going to kind of decompress this thing. So now I have drive E. Here it is on my desktop. Image DD. 23 megs. File system. NTFS. HPFS. Uh, EXT FAT. File system from the OS is NTFS. Double click it. Huh. I have a trash folder. Open that up. I've got expunged files. Info empty 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 okay so the copy that she made was empty well now comes the forensics part we have to recover deleted files she told us that you know these files were deleted. She's not too concerned with most of them, um, but she needs to get the files back. Now we have her drive mounted. We have just got to recover the files that were thrown away. Okay. So now comes the part where you look for program number two. You need some sort of program that can recover deleted files. Okay. And again, there's, there's tons of them out there. Uh, on Linux, uh, you know, there's a couple of them I use, but again, I'm on Windows, so I used a different one this time, and it worked perfectly. Um, so do a little research. Find out. Uh, it's a free program. Find out there's uh, a free program it will help you recover deleted files off of a drive because we have the drive mounted. Okay, so I'll give you a second on that one. Okay. So we have our drive mounted. We just need to recover deleted files. So, I used a program called uh, Recurvia. So there's there's Recurvia. It allows you to do all files or just picture files or anything like that. Well, let me let me keep OSF mount open just in case I need it. 
can drop that. Oops. Drop that over there. Keep that there. Put that there. So we have the drive mounted as drive E. I'm going to use Recurva to try to recover files off this drive. Now just so I have somewhere to save them, I'm going to make me a new folder on my desktop, call it Stacy. Oops, I already have one. I'm going to call it Stacy Recovered. So I'm going to say all files. It's alright, well where are the files? Well they're in a specific location and they are on drive E. Now, I want to recover everything. So I'm even going to do a deep scan. Hmm. There we go. So these were the files in the expunged folder. There's a private folder, expunged private. There's an info folder, etc., etc. In the state that they're in. Now some of them are unrecoverable. And it depends on the type of scan you do. You can actually recover some of these. So I'm going to recover every one of these. Right, recover. And I'm going to recover to... I don't want to recover back to drive E because the recovery may fail. So I'm going to recover back to my desktop to the Stacy Recovered folder. Okay. Now, here's a folder. Okay. There's all her recovered files. Let's take a look at them. And we got some pictures. Ah, that may be the file she didn't want somebody to see. Just some standard old picture files. That's that one, that one, that one, etc., etc. That one's corrupted. We've got a PDF file here. System intrusions. Hmm. So you spend some time, you go through all these files. So now, I could do these for you and kind of show you exactly where to go and all that, but sort through these files. You got some Word docs, you got some PDFs, you got some text files, you got a WAR file inside of here. Sort through these files and see we are looking for an account password um, that she needs to get into an account because that's what we're going to put right here. Okay. So she can, I, I, she said, I can replace most of what's there, but one file in particular that holds a very important account password. So take a look through these files and see if you can find that account password. And then when we come back, I'll, I'll do it and I'll show you where it's at. Okay, so when I got to these files, and I looked through the pictures first, the next thing I did, I played this voicemail. Okay, so it said it was Chuck from Tech Support. He's got the file. Use your phone number. Okay. So then I started looking through the others. You know, checked out the pictures, looked at that PDF. When I opened up that PDF, saw there was a phone number down there. So I wrote that one out. And went for this one. This one wouldn't open. 
kept going through, took a look at license, that's the True Crypt license, logins, there's Stacy, there's a password, wrote that one down, never know when it could come in handy. Looked at termination, there's the termination from Stacy to Alan. And look at this. There's Stacy's phone number. The other one was a generic phone number. Kind of like you know, the main line phone number. That's Stacy's number right there. So wrote that one down. Yep. Let me get out of that. Anyway, went through, went through, uh, and I saw this file here. We got a raw file that says your new password is. Yeah, let's open that up. Right, there it is. It's the Word doc. Your new password is. But it's password protected. Well, why don't we try our phone number? 519-555-4783. Okay. <clears throat> there it is. Your new password is. So, I'm going to get rid of these because I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy it. And go back here. Paste it. Submit. And we're in. is forensics my friend that's standard file recovery um, again there were hundreds of programs you could use uh, really just a matter of kind of you know going through here the the voicemail gave us the password to open this which was the password to uh, of course get through the challenge um, and of course that was the picture she didn't want people to see um, termination letter. I imagine that's the person that deleted her drive. But there you go, my friends. That is Forensics 1 by using Recurva to capture files that were deleted and by using OSF mount uh, to mount um, uh, drives, other drives. Okay. So very cool. So until next time, my friends, we'll get to forensics mission number two. Uh, but until then, this is Malik. I'll see you guys later.